Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Douglas Institute. I am uh, Hani Iskander. I will be your MC for the two days. Welcome to the psychosis early intervention. And we will have two days full of knowledge and a lot of information. I would like to welcome all of you, our guest speakers and our guests. Uh, what I'm going to do first, because of the time, I'm going to go through some housekeeping issues, and then I will leave the microphone to Dr. Mala, who is our chair, to present our guests and our speakers. So, just to remind everybody about the parking, I hope you paid it. It's $3, it's not as much. <laughs> You will receive your receipts and your certificates by email, so please make sure before you leave to give the registration desk the right email. No smoking in the premises here. If you would like to smoke, you can go outside. Today is a beautiful day, so you can go outside. The washrooms are downstairs. <laughs> the clock room is just on the same level here. Please keep your ID at all times. As you can see, we have a lot of high tech today. We have a simultaneous translation. So I would appreciate also don't go home with the uh, microphone and the, uh, the translation uh, machine <laughs> that you got and pick up your IDs and uh, your credit cards from the translation desk. Today we have a webcast, so it means that a lot of people are watching us live today from Nova Scotia to different Quebec City, etc. So it will be a little bit of more coordination than usual. And uh, what we are going to do is we are going to have some questions from, the, uh, from here. And please, you, I, I hope that everybody has a, a small card like this to write your question because there is no microphones in the, here for the questions. I will take uh, the webcast uh, questions and we will alternate one question from the hall here and one question from the webcast. You have some evaluation forms to fill. So don't forget your question cards and we have two uh, colleagues here that are going to collect that. And we have a forum for questions and you will have enough time, we will have enough time to ask for questions and ask for uh, commentaries and other things. No food or drinks in the amphitheater, please. It's very important to keep our amphitheater. Please put your cell phone or pager on vibration mode. Try to do it now, please, because it bothers the, uh, the speakers and it distracts them. This uh, conference is supported by a knowledge dissemination grant from the CIHR Institute of Neurosciences, Mental Health and Addiction. So, Professor Ashok Mala, is our chair. He's the director of the Douglas Hospital Prevention and Early Intervention Program for Psychosis, PEP Montreal, and a professor in the Department of Psychiatry at McGill University. He is the McGill University Canada Research Chair in Early Psychosis. His work focuses on studies in early phases of psychotic disorders, such as schizophrenia, and on prevention and early intervention of these severe illnesses. He's an international leader in the development of comprehensive programs for and research in early intervention in psychosis. His research program involves conducting studies in early stages of psychosis, including investigation of delay in treatment, finding the sources of delay so that the interventions directed at improving early case identification can be targeted, and studying the impact of assertive early case identification on outcome. His clinical and research interests have been primarily related to pursuing the goal of understanding neurobiological and psychosocial aspects of outcome in psychotic disorders. 
He has published more than 200 peer-reviewed articles, held many peer-reviewed research grants, and being an advisor on program development and research in early intervention in psychotic disorders in several countries, including Canada. Exemplary Psychiatrist Award, this award is presented by the Alliance for the Mentally Ill, AMI Quebec. It recognizes psychiatrists noteworthy for developing, directing, and or providing exemplary service designed to help people living with mental illnesses in criminal justice system, including the prevention of unnecessary incarcerations. So without further ado, please welcome with me our chair, Professor Ashok Mala. Thank you. Thank you, honey. It's, um, it's kind of a bit embarrassing to be uh, <laughs> introduced in your own institution, and, uh, but uh, that was very, those are very kind words. Um, first of all, I would like to ask if there's anybody in the audience who is either a speaker or on the panel to please take one of the seats at the front because that will, that will release seats at the back as people trickle in, they're not going to come and sit in the front. So that's just a, uh, a minor request. Uh, we are full. Uh, we have had to turn away 100 uh, registrants, and that's why we have so many people on webcast. So there will be people coming in uh, a bit later on. As Hani said, that uh, we have simultaneous translation available. Um, most of the conference will be in English. But tomorrow afternoon, the panel discussion will be in both languages. Um, I, I think Hani already alluded to the fact that this conference is funded through a peer-reviewed grant from uh, CIHR, a knowledge dissemination grant. Uh, but it also was matched dollar for dollar by uh, uh, Bristol Myers Squibb with a, uh, what is it called, an unrestricted educational grant. Uh, so uh, we're thankful to both our sources of funding. I also want to thank all the speakers uh, who have come from, some of them from very long distances, and I think uh, I can assure you that over the next two days uh, we will have a, a very informative uh, conference on early intervention psychosis. We have tried our best to keep this conference uh, very much in the spirit of translation of knowledge and translated knowledge so that it actually influences those of you, and most of you, I presume, are in, in uh, service delivery, uh, and, for, and also to allow us to think a little bit further where we go from here, uh, because we have, not, we have achieved quite a bit, but there's, a, there's still a lot to be done. Um, I want to, this conference is a lot of work for those of you who have organized conferences. There's a lot of work and uh, a lot of people are involved in that. It, it's more than a year ago that we actually planned it. It is part of our 10th anniversary for the program and this is kind of our big uh, event, but there will be several other things that we'll be doing uh, over the next six to seven months to celebrate uh, this 10th anniversary. I want to particularly thank our, our organizing committee. Uh, there were many more members in the committee, but I just listed the ones that have been most involved. And I can assure you that this, none of us this here that we're doing today would have been possible without two people. And that's Megan Pope and Jesse Ranger. Uh, Megan is a, a research assistant who's been working with us for the last three or four years. Uh, Megan, do you mind standing up? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. And uh, I'm also pleased to say that uh, she's taken her time to decide about her career and now has decided to, to switch over to become a graduate student under the supervision of Dr. Vidya Iyer and, and myself, and is going to be working on a transcultural psychiatry project. Uh, Jesse from the communications department has been instrumental in getting this all organized. And uh, also uh, Vidya uh, and our secretary, Elizabeth Lee, 
has been very, very helpful in getting this conference together. So we're already running a little bit late, so what I'm going to do next is ask our three uh, people who are going to introduce uh, or say a few opening words for the conference. Uh, Lynn McQuay uh, will be the first person. She is our uh, Director General of the Institute, the Douglas Institute. Um, and she's been with us at this institute for almost a year and a half now, pretty well. And uh, she has been extremely supportive of the program and uh, also has, has recognized the, the, uh, the importance of prevention and early intervention, which hopefully will then spread to other disorders as well. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to ask Lynn to come and say a few words. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mala. Bonjour, uh, merci beaucoup et bienvenue à l'Institut en santé mentale universitaire Douglas, un établissement conçu en 1890 en forme de village euh, ségrégué où habitaient près de 2000 personnes aux prises avec des problèmes de santé mentale pour leur vie en retrait fort stigmatisé. I'm going to say a few words in French and then I will move into English in a few minutes. Uh, for purposes of our translators. Uh, Aujourd'hui, en 2013, nous sommes ici à l'Institut universitaire en santé mentale Douglas, un établissement transformé, affilié avec l'Université McGill, un centre collaborateur de l'Organisation mondiale de la santé, et se rapprochant de plus en plus à la communauté, nous accueillons chaleureusement nos collègues par web diffusion, particulièrement nos centres de santé et services sociaux. Je comprends que le centre de santé et services sociaux Synergie est avec nous ce matin. À la société et aux pratiques modernes de médecine et de la psychiatrie, reconnaissant de plus en plus que la, la cause principale des problèmes de santé mentale est biologique, génétique, impliquant l'importance de l'imagerie cérébrale dans le diagnostic, une maladie du cerveau qui se compare au cancer grâce aux travaux de nos chercheurs qui démontrent qu'il y a des biomarqueurs qui, après analyse, peuvent prédire le risque de développer un problème de santé mentale, promettant ainsi aux professionnels d'intervenir tôt dans la trajectoire de la maladie afin de prévenir la chronicité de cette maladie si débilitante. En tout temps, l'Institut universitaire en santé mentale Douglas, maintenant, a la responsabilité clinique pour plus de 17 000 personnes à la fois. Nous, nous partageons cette responsabilité avec nos partenaires dans le réseau de la santé et des services sociaux, en soutenant la pratique de la première ligne et en dé développant des ententes de collaboration en multiplicité. Alors, nous misons le rétablissement vers une société qui se voit, espérons, plus inclusive à la diversité, et nous sommes ravis en cette occasion de la dixième anniversaire du programme PEP Montréal de vous accueillir en si grand nombre à notre congrès international. Je tiens d'ailleurs à souligner la présence de notre directeur de la santé mentale au ministère de la Santé et des services sociaux, Dr André Delorme, bienvenue. On vous remercie de votre leadership soutenu au sein du ministère de la Santé et des services sociaux pour la cause de la santé mentale. Depuis que nous avions été nommés un institut en 2006, nous développons davantage l'approche Douglas, qui a pour but d'agencer les travaux de nos 58 chercheurs de renommée internationale avec nos cliniciens ainsi que nos utilisateurs de services. The transformation of our clinical services at the Douglas Mental Health University Institute over the past 10 years has been remarkable, and it has been my honor to serve as the Director General over the past 18 months and to discover these remarkable achievements. The Douglas Institute and its transformation is an incredible marriage between learning, research, and care. Each patient care experience takes us one step further in making the next patient's care even better. I would like to acknowledge the presence of a few people here in the, in the hall, particularly the Beck family. Tony Beck and Ray Beck and, his son, and their son Ian, thank you very much. Jim Hughes, the Beck Foundation, for your leadership. for your leadership, generous support 
of the Douglas Institute through uh, the Graham Beck Chair in Schizophrenia, but more importantly in recent years, your leadership Canada-wide in partnering with the Canadian Institute for Health Research in helping to get research results to the population, to the patients who need it more quickly within the next four to five years. Thank you so much for that leadership. It's making a tremendous difference. We also have our past Chief Executive Officer of the Douglas Institute, Jacques Hendlitz, with us. And I'd like to, I know we're going to hear from, but acknowledge uh, the leadership presence of Mimi Israel, our Chief of Psychiatry and Chair for the Department of Psychiatry at McGill University. Among the, <laughs> Among the 17,000 patients that are cared for at the Douglas Institute at any given point in time, we find the outstanding and innovative work of the PEP Montreal program, Prevention and Early Intervention Program for Psychosis. As most of you in this hall are aware, this is an internationally renowned, integrated clinical research program dedicated to providing assessment and treatment services for young adults experiencing the early stages of psychosis. Its team of clinicians and research staff work with individuals in the early stages of psychosis and their families to help them resume functioning and achieve their personal recovery goals. In 2003, Dr. Ashok Mala and his team established PEP Montreal, and we are now here celebrating 10 successful years of this innovative program that gives hope to so many and changes forever our view in society of what the illness of psychosis is. Thanks to the groundbreaking work of the PEP Montreal team, inspired by the work of our world leader that we will hear from shortly in this field, Dr. Patrick McGorry, young adults suffering a first episode of psychosis are no longer sentenced to a lifetime of chronic mental illness, but can aspire to recovery and inclusiveness in society. Ours is a society that has not invested enough in mental health, and yet the burden to society of mental health problems is considered to be double that of cancer and other illnesses. Psychotic disorders are the most serious of all mental disorders, and these disorders usually first appear in adolescence or early adulthood, and they may go unrecognized for many months and even years. Research has shown that one of the greatest obstacles to successful treatment may be the duration of untreated psychosis. Early detection and early treatment can result in full recovery in the majority, as, as you will be learning over the next couple of days. Thus, preventing prolonged suffering and disability. Revolutionary changes in our healthcare system are needed, both here in Quebec and around the world, if we're going to succeed in helping the majority of individuals to recover. In concluding my opening remarks, I would like to apologize to guests who attended a, a, an evening session yesterday evening and repeat the quote from Romeo Dallaire, but I do think it's quite appropriate in this circumstance. Romeo Dallaire, of course, is the liberal senator and former commander of the UN mission in Rwanda. And he asks the following question when addressing his audiences. And I ask you to consider the same question as you uh, listen to the speakers over the next two days. Do you truly consider all humans to be human or some humans to be more human than others? If you consider all to be equal, then we should work together at advancing humanity. Supporting our first episode psychosis program contributes to advancing humanity and gives young individuals at risk, members of the future of our society, the opportunity to live a full life without the condemnation to the confinements of living with the permanent debilitating sy symptoms of a severe chronic illness. Like it or not, we are all part of this worldwide revolution in mental health care. Let's see it through together. I wish you a wonderful co uh, Congress, and um, I look forward to learning together with you over the next couple of days. Thank you very much. Merci, uh, Lynn. Je vous présente uh, Dr. Delorme. Dr. Delorme est uh, le directeur de santé mentale du gouvernement de Québec. Uh, I'm not going to give you a long introduction, except to say that uh, maybe many of you don't know that even though Dr. Delorme has this huge responsibility in the government, he still sees patients and runs an ACT team in Granby. And uh, I, I know from someone else who actually received care there, 
that what excellent care they, the people do receive in Granby, which is a, a smaller town not far from Montreal. And I also uh, want to sort of convey to you that um, in Canada, in North America in general, social psychiatry, social and community psychiatry has not had the same popularity or the same prestige as it has in Britain or, or in Europe generally. But I think uh, several of us are still convinced, and I think Dr. Delorme is one of them, that our way forward is really through social and community psychiatry. So with that, I would ask Dr. Delorme to come and say a few words for this Congress. Merci beaucoup. C'est un plaisir, un honneur d'être ici pour euh, ouvrir la conférence. C'est un peu intimidant aussi quand on sait euh, la qualité des personnes qui vont parler pendant les deux prochaines journées. I want to thank the organizers for this opportunity to be here today. And it's a bit daunting and intimidating to open the, the two days knowing the quality of the people that will be speaking here today. Um, I usually say that in society, but today I will say in this room, 50% of the people that have a mental disease started before they were 14. 80% of the people started before they were 20. Now that's quite impressive. And if I were to say that about cancer, you'd be stunned. Um, I think um, I would not be the first to say that, in fact, mental disorder in youth and children is the chronic disease, number one. And on the other hand, there are many uh, identified and effective means of treating these disorders, and a lot of them are not psychopharmacology. Over the next three uh, or five years, I think there will be three major challenges. The first one is going to be to be able to detect and treat very uh, soon as they emerge the mental diseases. And if I were to say this, and this were a cancer society, guess what you'd be doing tomorrow morning? You'd be out there looking for those 50 or 80 percent of diseases, cancers, that would be coming out in your, in your clients. And however, that's not what we're doing right now in mental disorders. So the first challenge is to identify them and treat them as they emerge. The second major challenge is going to be adapt our services to the needs of the youth. Right now, it's the other way around. They have to adapt to our services. And you know, my practice is pretty comfortable and I don't see why I change it because I really enjoy it the way it is. But that's not how youth react to our services. So that's going to be the major challenge number two. The third one is there's groundbreaking work that's been done here at the Douglas with Michael Meany and Gustavo Turecki identifying the pathway between trauma and genetic modifications. There's also groundbreaking rule being done at the CDC in Atlanta and at the Kaiser Permanente uh, in the States where they're identifying specific traumas that happen when you're two or three or five, and the impact that has down the road on physical and mental disorders five, 10, or 20 years down the road. And if I were to tell you that exposing our kids to these, I'm just inventing this, in, uh, exposing our kids when they're three years old to this will, is a probability of doubling or tripling or a tenfold increase in a physical disorder, well, guess what you'd do tomorrow morning? You'd say, well, let's do something about these. We're not going to expose our kids to these for, uh, without uh, making sure that the disease doesn't uh, appear 10 years down the road. But that's what we have now. We are now capable of identifying simple traumas that are major traumas. For example, somebody imprisoned, uh, a parent uh, being beaten in front of his kids, uh, I, I won't go through the list, but these are identifiable traumas, and they have a direct link in probabilities of mental and physical disorder 10 years down the road if you accumulate them, four or more of these classes of trauma. And we're not doing much about that either. So 
Apart from identifying and treating disorder when they emerge, what we have to start doing over the next 10 years, I think, is start identifying the traumas that are going to make these diseases appear and try to do something about that. So I'll conclude here. I'm sure we're going to be fascinated by the talks we're going to have over the next two days, and I hope it will send us into the future. Thank you. Uh, last but not least, uh, I'll ask Dr. Mimi Israel to say a few words before we begin our plenary lecture. Uh, Dr. Israel is the Chief of Psychiatry at the Douglas Institute. Uh, she's an Associate Professor in the Department of Psychiatry at McGill and the Chair of the Department of Psychiatry. Her own specialty is in eating disorders, uh, but she has been extremely supportive of the uh, early intervention program right from the time that we first started 10 years ago. So if I may ask you, Mimi, to come and say a few words. Thank you very much. I'm gonna start by welcoming the audience and as well warmly thanking the speakers who've come from close and far to, contribu to contribute to this very special celebration. We are indeed celebrating a special birthday, but rather than stepping back and saying dix ans déjà, my first reaction was a simple wow. If Pep Montreal were a child, we would call it a prodigy. Because for those of us who were there from the beginning, it was amazing to watch how quickly Pep Montreal established itself, grew, and blossomed into the exceptional program it is today. In record time, PEP Montreal was providing the best care for patients and their families, attracting clinical and graduate students, and carrying out cutting-edge research. For the Douglas and for McGill, PEP Montreal has not only brilliantly led our efforts to provide the best care for young psychotic patients, it has become a strong model for how clinical research teaching programs should operate. In fact, if you want to develop a stellar program, I would strongly recommend that you approach Dr. Ashok Mala for the recipe. You will hear today about how PEP Montreal reaches out to patients, addresses the needs of families, and includes the patients and their families in the creative process of developing best practices. You will notice how devoted and passionate the PEP Montreal team is about their work and how the patient is always first and a valued partner in the teaching and research mission. You will recognize that effective interdisciplinary teamwork is not only possible, but highly contributory to a program's success. You will appreciate how clinical research should be done, close to the patient and seamlessly integrated into clinical care and teaching mission. You will also learn about PEP Montreal's research contributions, their knowledge dissemination efforts, and their creative plans for the future. You will understand how PEP Montreal has forged valued um, partnerships with the global academic community in the field of early intervention and acquired its international reputation. You will understand why residents, fellows, and graduate students line up to learn in this stimulating and productive environment and how they emerge from their experience as sensitive clinicians, good team players, and competent clinician researchers. You will also appreciate why every first episode psychosis program at McGill has adopted the PEP Montreal model and why teams outside Montreal seek to model their clinical program after Pep Montreal's. But you know what it's like with recipes. You need the right chef. The person who brings those magical ingredients together to make the difference between good and great. And so, I must highlight Pep Montreal's chef, Dr. Ashok Mala. Dr. Mala's clear vision, exceptional leadership, and passion have been instrumental in Pep Montreal's outstanding achievements. 
I had the privilege of watching him in action as he expertly blended all the ingredients to create a program that has more than fulfilled its original promise and that will likely make a huge difference in the lives of many future generations of youth at risk for these devastating illnesses. So I will pass on the baton to him, and I want us all to clap and congratulate Dr. Mala and his team for 10 exceptional years. Okay, enough of that. I think we'll, uh, just before I ask our first plenary speaker, I just want to give you a little bit of a flavor of what the next two days, how they have been organized. What we, what we have done is created four, at least four major themes. Uh, there were many more themes we could have included, but I think for the time that we have, the first theme is going to be after Pat's um, plenary lecture, which will be an overview of early intervention and the culture of early intervention services. I'm going to give a, a brief overview of what we have done in the last 10 years, but the details of what we have done will be presented by many of our students, uh, both present and ex-students. So the four themes are, uh, the first one is neurobiology, neuroimaging, the second theme is going to be on social psychiatry, and uh, in that, uh, actually, Dr. Alain Lesage is going to be moderator there, and we're going to talk about stigma, self-stigma, and, and there will be presentations, uh, local presentations, uh, within that same theme. Tomorrow, we'll have the morning on transcultural psychiatry, and then the afternoon on comorbidity. So, but the structure will be the same, a plenary, uh, one or two plenary sp speakers, uh, and followed by work that was done at PEP, either by people who are still at PEP or people who have gone on to do bigger and better things. 